Hello, glider pilots, and uh, welcome to the Soaring Society of Boulder Ground School. Uh, this short session uh, covers the four signs of a stall. Uh, hi, I'm Armin Charbonneau, CFI G, uh, with uh, Soaring Society of Boulder, and uh, this uh, session is intended primarily for my students uh, to be ready for uh, training. Uh, but uh, also it's available on YouTube for uh, those who would like to watch and, and uh, have this uh, lesson and then know what, uh, what the four signs of a stall are. So why do we learn about the signs of a stall? Well, first I ask the question, what's the best way to recover from a stall spin? Uh, and the answer is, don't let the glider stall. Uh, so if you're able to, if the pilot's able to recognize that the stall is coming and prevent it, uh, nothing happens. There's no stall, there's no recovery needed. Uh, the pilot training standards uh, requires that glider pilots uh, demonstrate how to perform and recover from the stall. And yeah, you need to learn that and you need to do it well. Uh, but it's more important to learn how to recognize that the glider is about to stall and thus prevent it in, in normal operations. Um, so knowing how to recognize an impending stall and avoiding such uh, is a far more efficient way to soar uh, and recover than, than stalling and recovering. Uh, and it's also a lot safer if you're close to the ground. So, you know, is there four, six, or seven signs to a stall? I say there's four. Uh, traditionally, instructors have said, have, uh, talked about six, and the latest uh, glider flying handbook actually even says seven. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll go through that uh, kind of at the end, uh, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll cover those additionals. The critical thing is that you learn the signs of a stall in order, uh, regardless of how many uh, you choose to recognize, uh, that knowing them in order tells you how close you are to that stall. So the first, let's jump into this. The first one, nose high. Uh, you use your eyes, and you know that the, this is the first sign of the stall. The nose of the glider is above the horizon. If the nose of the glider is above the horizon, eventually it's going to slow down and stall uh, if you hold the stick back enough to keep the, the nose above the horizon. Uh, that, that's obvious to a properly trained pilot. The next is the low wind sound. And then for this, you use your ears. So the first one, you use your eyes. The second one, you use your ears. Uh, and the pilot should be listening to the pitch of the wind, not the volume. Uh, the human ear is very good at discerning pitch, and that's why we can hear music. Um, the fast airspeed generates a high-pitched hiss, something like when you're going fast and glider. And when you're going slow, the airspeed generates a low-pitched moan, kind of a you're getting close to a stall. So if the nose is above the horizon and the wind sound is low, you're getting close to a stall. The next sign is floppy control. So you use your hand to sense the third sign of a stall. And as the glider gets going slow, your control authority diminishes. You have to use longer stick and rudder motions to control the glider. Um, and if the, so if the nose is above the horizon, the wind sound is slow, low, and the controls are sloppy. You're getting close, very close to a stall. All right, the fourth one, pre-stall buffet. So you use your personal center of gravity to note the fourth sign of the stall. Personal center of gravity could be called the butt, but kind of where your center is. Um, so just before the glider stalled, the aircraft will shudder. Buffet. Um, if the nose is above the horizon, the wind sound is slow, the controls are floppy, and you feel the shutter, the glider starting at the stall. All right, quiz. Quiz time. Uh, in order, and I'll give you a little time. In order, what are the four signs of the stall? Give you a little time to think about it. So 
for those who need a hint, your eyes, your ears, your hand, and your butt. Answer? Four signs of a stall, nose high, low wind sound, floppy controls, increased elbow. So here's a practical application on why uh, it's a good thing to know, be able to recognize the stall, and even more important, to recognize the stall is coming than to actually stall and recover. Um, while well, giving rides at a commercial operation a few years ago, we had, we had a tow pilot and assistant towing a seat flow. Um, several of the ride givers, or all the ride givers, really all complained that he was towing too slow, and we all encouraged him to tow faster. Um, but I think he was just trying to do as many tows as possible. He's probably getting paid by the tow or something, or and he wanted to get us up as high as possible as soon as possible. So he was flying at a high uh, climb angle, which is too slow for a glider with a uh, heavy 232 glider with two people in the back seat. And sometimes I was observing the first couple signs of a stall, and all of a sudden the tow plane would bounce upward because he had a thermal. Well, to stay in position, I needed to raise the nose to the glider well above the horizon. And I already knew I had one or two signs of a stall, so I didn't want to do that because uh, I knew bad outcomes would happen. Uh, I avoided those bad outcomes by noting the stall was imminent. And I'd go to either low toe or release. So what should I have said to the tow pilot? Well, at the time, I was uh, fairly new to being a commercial pilot and a little bit intimidated by the whole thing. And, and I didn't really quite know what to say, but now that I'm a little more experienced, here's what I would have said to him. Like, you know, you're towing us pretty close to the stall speed of the glider. Um, we've got, you know, things are, we could stall. Let's, let's go up and practice stalls. So on the next flight, why don't you fly slow and I'll be on, we'll be on tow and you get going with a high angle of attack, and I will stall the glider behind the tow plane while we're still on the rope. Now, if a tow pilot thinks through that, he realizes the rope isn't going to break because there's no jerk on it. Um, but that glider with its great big wings is going to pull the tail, which is much, much smaller than the wings of the glider, going to pull it down which means the nose of the tow plane is going to be looking pretty much straight up and down, and certainly the tow plane will stall too, along with the glider uh, dropping and pulling the tail down and preventing the, the tow plane pilot from being able to lower the nose and get out of the stall and it'll probably enter a, uh, maybe enter a, uh, a tailspin of some sort. Uh, it would be very, very bad, uh, and I think any tow pilot would recognize that Gee, I really don't want that to happen, so maybe I'll tow these glider pilots a little faster. Okay, so are there four, six, or seven signs of a stall? Well, let's go through it. Uh, traditionally, the phenomenon has been taught as six signs of a stall, which is nose high, same as mine, four stalls, four, four uh, signs. Uh, stick back. Well, I dropped that one because I really notice that where the stick position. I fly the glider, I don't really look at where the stick is. Stick goes where the stick needs to be. I'm, I'm looking out at the horizon, uh, not not inside the cockpit of the stick. Uh, low wind sound, we all we're all on that one. Uh, low airspeed on the airspeed indicator. Well, the observant pilot who know, who's hearing the low wind pitch sound doesn't need the airspeed indicator to know he's going. He or she is going slow. So I dropped that one. Floppy controls, okay, we agree on that. Uh, Pre-stall buffet, we agree on that. So that's how I get from four, at, from six to four. 
A seventh one got added in the latest uh, edition of the Glider Flying Handbook. And it says, uh, for the seventh side of the stall, the yaw string lies flat on the canopy. Well, <clears throat> I've never looked at the yaw string while practicing or instructing installs. Uh, so it might be correct, but it's, it's irrelevant. Uh, if the glider stalls and the, it happens that the, the yaw string sticks, it kind of mats its way onto the canopy. I think that's fine, but um, it's a little bit late to tell me anything that uh, I need to know, so I don't use that one. Stall recovery. Um, too often, uh, pilots, when they recover from practicing, a, when they do a stall and, and practice stall and recovery, uh, they push the stick way forward and put the glider into a dive. And sometimes I'm just looking straight at the ground through the, through the canopy. And uh, it's just not necessary. Uh, you lose a lot of altitude doing that. Uh, it obviously gets the glider going kind of fast, and then you got to pull out of it. it. You just don't need to do any of that. All you need to do is let the back pressure off the stick, and the glider will be flying immediately. So just basically stop pulling the stick back and the glider will be flying again. So glider pilot. Uh, I had an instructor who, a great instructor who, who emphasized this and, and I'll pass it on to you. Keep your nose below the horizon and the yaw string straight. That'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. So thanks and uh, have a good day and uh, uh, happy soaring. Bye, everyone.